lace mocking is a type of pleat work embroidery that you often see on many of the gathered collars in the portraiture of the 16th century. There's also a few surviving examples of this type of technique. The stitch itself is simple. It's really just a running stitch that goes into and over the pleats at varying lengths. And as each row of running stitch is worked, a pattern emerges. For me, the most difficult part has always been designing the pattern chart, as it can cause you to go cross-eyed very quickly. So today I'm going to walk you through how to work a simple design and I've included a link to a downloadable PDF in the description box so that you can follow along. Hello friend, I'm Lelena with Thimble and Plume and we are historical costumers and we have a love for sharing the things that we have learned over the years in order to empower you to become the best costumer you can be. And first, here's what you'll need. You'll need an embroidery floss in either silk, wool, or cotton. I have seen examples from the 16th century of linen being used in a darning stitch, but I haven't tried it myself. If you do choose to do linen, you'll definitely want to find something on the thicker side so that your stitches are filled in, or you may need to do more rows. You'll need a cruel embroidery needle in a size seven or eight, or you can use a darning needle in the appropriate size as well. You'll need your pattern design chart and you'll need a place to hold it and to keep track of where you are. I found this magnetic board very useful and it even has a cool magnetic ruler that you can use and move it down the lines as you go. I'll put a link to this. I did find some on Amazon. I'll put a link to this in the description box as well. A pleating board and your pleated fabric. It's very difficult to find any sort of design chart specific to pattern darning smocking, but you can use charts designed for pattern darning on fabric. You just have to think of the lines on the fabric as the pleats, as opposed to fibers that you're going through or spaces in the fabric. Usually when working on pattern darning on pleats, we're working horizontally across the rows. Pattern darning, patterns oftentimes will be made to work vertically. So if you do find one like that, you will need to adjust it. So if you do find a vertical pattern, you can use it. You just need to adjust it to a horizontal design. And really any sort of charted design works well, specifically anything for cross stitch, or knitting, I've seen some knitting patterns that work really well for pattern darning. Sometimes you can use them right off the page, other times they'll require a little tweak or two. This is what a pattern darning chart looks like. Think of the narrow rows of the graph paper as the individual pleats. The black lines going across represent the embroidery floss stitches that float over the pleats, while the open spaces represent going through the pleats. You start at the top right and work towards your left. To help out, I've put together a Pinterest board that has pattern darning designs that would work for the horizontal pattern darning smocking. Some of them are vertical, so adjust accordingly, but I've tried to keep them as appropriate for the 16th century as possible. So this book is the German Renaissance Patterns for Embroidery. It is a facsimile of a 1568 embroidery model book and it's got all sorts of designs in it. So Marion McNeely went and did, um, she took a bunch of model books and compiled them into this book and it's called German Model Bucher. It's a compilation of eight German needlework and weaving pattern books from 1524 to 1556. And if you go back into the charted designs, there's lots of patterns that will work for it. Now you can either take it straight out of the book or I actually like to put it onto graph paper so I can read it better. So typically what I'll do is I will print out some graph paper and mark the spaces according to what the design is. One thing to be careful of is the length of the floats that go over the pleats. You don't want them so long that they end up catching on things all the time. So if you do have something that is on the longer side, you may want to put a little space in between where you go into one pleat. It will leave an open space in your pattern, but it is something to think about as you're looking at designs that you may need to adjust it based on that. And I've linked a downloadable PDF pattern of what we're doing today. It's very simple. It's very small. So once you have your pattern figured out, the next step is to pleat your fabric and prepare for embroidery. So go ahead and pleat up the fabric according to the method of your choice. So I do have a couple suggestions. Since the pleats need to be close together, I would suggest using shallow pleats so that you don't have to use a lot of fabric, which also increases the bulkiness of the garment. So in my experience, the 
best spacing for pattern darning tends to be seven to 10 pleats per centimeter. Now that's a lot of pleats to fit in a centimeter. So you'll want to keep them very close together so that you don't have to use as much fabric. So I would suggest that your pleats are spaced no more than a quarter of an inch from each other. So if you are doing the in and out method, you will want to space your dots an eighth of an inch apart. If you're doing the, the pickup dot method, then they would be a quarter of an inch apart or less. I hope that makes sense. And I really hope that I haven't confused you with all that. And if I have, make sure to leave a comment and I will make sure to answer your question as best I can. I also always suggest before you pleat your fabric, do a sample piece in order to test your gauge and make sure that you have the right proportion of fabric to pleats. So we've done an entire video on pleating, so I will go ahead and put a card up here so you can pause and watch that in the meantime. Otherwise, let's continue on. So now that your fabric is pleated, what you need to do is you will need to block your pleats. I did talk a lot about that in the last video. Again, I will put that in the description box. I'll put a link to that in the description box. Basically what we're doing, we're pinning out our pleats into the space that they need to occupy onto a pleating board. Now this is a board, the one that I'm using is just a quilter's board that I got and it's really used for pressing, but it works great as a, as a board. I've also made my own with a piece of board and some batting and a covered it in muslin. You can also purchase that. Then you place a piece of graph paper down and place your pleated fabric on top of that, pinning it out to the finished desired size. Then you go through and make sure all your pleats are evenly spaced and straight up and down. All right, now that that's out of the way, let's get darning. Okay, so I've pulled it, I've run it up to the edge. Now I'm gonna bring it up in through this first pleat here. Now I wanna make sure I'm on my row, so I've got my gathering stitch to guide me. I'm gonna go through this first pleat, keeping my needle parallel, excuse me, going through that first pleat. Now my pattern has me going over, floating over seven pleats. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then I'm going back in. And that's through one. And then I go back over seven more pleats. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. This guy here. If I can get like two or three threads at the top here, even better and keeping my needle vertical, excuse me, and keeping my needle horizontal, I'll go through that one. And again, I skip over seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'll go over this one. Now, one thing you wanna be careful of is your tension. You don't wanna pull it so tight that you end up choking them, but you see, I'm keeping it pretty loose. Um, I'm just giving it a gentle tug just to pull them into place. I'm not even mo moving, um, I'm not giving it any much pressure at all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then to the next one. Took a little bit too deep of a bite in that one, but it's just a sample, we'll leave it be. Okay. Now, if you find that you've pulled it too tight, what you can do is pull back on the seam allowance over here. You can adjust your pleats and then back through here and so that I'm going back into my seam allowance. I just want to do a little running stitch to kind of keep everything in place. And then to secure it, I'll do a couple of back stitches here in the seam allowance area. Put it back to the back and snip. For two, second for the second row, I'm going through two through two pleats to start with, and I'm going to skip over five. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, okay, and then I'm going to be going through three.
So once you have the gathering stitches woven in, the next step is you need to back it. And we're going to discuss how to do that in our uh, Smock Shirt Sew Along series, which I'll put up here. Otherwise, you might enjoy this other video. Happy stitching, and I'll see you in the next video.